We're everywhere you are streaming on the net. We're Radio Sheffield, and we're homegrown for the next two hours. Singers and bands that are native to your neighborhood. Music handmade and cultivated in your community. We're Radio Sheffield. Homegrown? Homegrown. Homegrown. This is Willie Andrew Everickson, and I'm in conversation today with Kelly Bell from the Kelly Bell Band. We had a guest in the studio, and uh, Kelly gave her some advice. My name is Emma Tracy. Hi, Emma. So, Emma, I understand you like the band. Yes. Okay, cool. How long have you have you been a fan of the band, or a friend of the band, rather? Around four years. Cool. Four years. Well, you're the, like the next generation of fans. That's awesome. You're okay. keeping me employed. What would you say to people who have stage fright? What would you say to them to help them get over it? That's an excellent question. Actually, people don't ask that question often enough. I would say think about why it is that you picked up a guitar in the first place or why you started singing in the first place or you know I mean some people have this misconception that I'm going to get in front of people and I'm going to be a star and it's all about being a star and if and if that's really their motivation then I would tell them not do it anyway to don't worry about getting in front of people because if that's your only motivation is to be a mm -hmm. star you're in it for the wrong reasons because what's going to happen is this is a very difficult business and you mm -hmm. have to work very hard at it just because you work really hard doesn't mean it's like anything else it doesn't mean that you're going to catch all the same breaks that somebody who maybe didn't work as quite as hard at it or maybe they work twice as hard as you who knows but you have to find a way to love every minute of what you're doing including practicing it I, you know for people that have the stage fright a little bit of anxiety before you go out there is really a good thing because it'll keep you sharp it'll make you go back and practice it'll mm -hmm. make you think about what your mistakes are and it'll make you prepare but if it's earth shattering nerves then I would say that you need to really think about what was it like the first time you heard a clean guitar chord when you played a guitar for the first time or the first song you ever sang in the shower when nobody else could hear you if you're a dancer the first time you were dancing in your living room when nobody else was home and watching mm -hmm. and think about that moment and what you really enjoyed about it and then put your mind back there and then remember that these people came to watch you do that what you used to do in your living room mm -hmm. because they can't do it they don't know how to do it and they don't want to know because they have other skills that you don't have mm -hmm. but the skill that you have they enjoy and it means something to them and you're going to help them get through their day you're going to help them go deal with Monday because sometimes you know Monday could be really crazy if you're doing something for them on Saturday or Sunday you're helping them get through Monday so I think that's the best way that I could think to really attack your stage fright it's a Kelly Bell Band exclusive Wow. was there anything that really like pushed you to start singing excellent question that is an excellent question. you should do this for a little <laughs> yes so when I was a little kid my dad took me to the Warner Theater in DC and he took me to see Clarence Carter Bobby Blue Bland and B.B. King. And I was a kid. I listened to go-go music and funk. I was a poor kid from, from Northeast D.C., Riggs Park. I didn't know anything about blues. My dad used to make me listen to it on Saturday mornings on this public radio station, WPFW. There was a guy mm -hmm. called the Bama. And he would, you know, play these old songs. And I'm like, Dad, I don't want to hear that old <laughs> stuff, man. I don't, don't make me listen to that. But my father, God rest his soul, taught me a lot of wonderful lessons. He would take me around and have me cut other people's lawns. A lot of old folks that couldn't do it for themselves and stuff like that. Not for money. And at the same time he's teaching me that lesson, he's also teaching me the blues and he's forcing me to listen. He's like, that's where all of that stuff that you listen to comes from. You need to hear that. <laughs> so he would force me to listen to it while we were driving around doing this. And he was also forcing me to take care of people who had less than I had, even though we were poor. So he always thought that there was somebody that had less than us. So he took me to see Bobby Bland, Clarence Carter and B.B. King. And I'm sitting in the crowd and Clarence Carter came on. He was funny. And then Bobby Blue Bland came on. I, I don't know what happened to my brain. All mm -hmm. I know is when he was done, every woman in the house was fanning themselves. They all had programs. <laughs> and I was looking at my dad. And I'm going, Dad, it's not hot in here. What's going on? <laughs> These people are fanning themselves like we're in a hot church or something. I'm like, and it was frantic. And then, woo, I must have heard woo like a thousand times. And I'm a little kid, so I had no idea what that was about. And, and that was the first time that I went, I want to do that to people. I want to move people like that. I want to say something and do something. I want to be something that makes people that happy. So I decided at a very young age 
especially after spending time with my grandmother. My grandmother was a, is, is a woman that says, even at 97 now, that the prayers that you make for other people are the ones that come true. So I have two goals in life. The first goal is to greet the son with the intention to be a better man than I was the day before. Goal number two is to never, ever forget goal number one. And with that, my mission is to make other people in this world happy. Sometimes even at the price of my own happiness, because it comes around and brings me happiness in the back end, but to to give them happiness. And sometimes that comes from sharing my stories or sharing other stories or just kind of doing that with people. That's what Bobby Bland did for me. And it made me want to do this. And here, after all of these years, I still everything I'm telling you is absolutely genuine. This isn't something that I say for the radio. If you stop me in a supermarket, I would explain it to you the exact same way. This is who I am. Okay. So that's that's what started me to wanting to do something. So so this is for you then, for being a friend, not a fan. Okay. All right. Things ain't no different to me. You said people change and this time I see yeah. Still ain't found who you trying to be. I said things ain't no different to me. Yeah. Turning your nose up at everything we do. I wish I could see you. The way that you do Biding your time now Selling my passion for your truth I wish you could see you The way that I do, yeah And things ain't no different to me you said people change and this time I'd see yeah. And still ain't found who you trying to be I said things ain't no different to me yeah. I heard a little bit more babe, Every time we speak Trying to find some kind of way to give you everything you need. But it seems I'm wrong again because our love ain't on the men. Well, well, I guess your grass is greener, baby, on the other side of the fence. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's better that way. <laughs> Things ain't no different to me. You said people change and this time I'd see. Yeah, and still ain't found who you trying to be. I said things ain't no different to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things ain't no different to me. You said people change and this time I see. Yeah, and still ain't found who I'm trying to be. But I'm sure enough working on it each and every day, man. I said things. Ain't no different to me. That's for you. See ya!